Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you want to adjust the settings of a workbook for printing purposes, you can do that by using the Page Setup dialog box. You can access this dialog box by clicking the Page Setup dialog box launcher button that appears in the lower right corner of the Page Setup button group on the Page Layout tab within the ribbon. The Page Setup dialog box allows you to make changes to your worksheet's printed layout. It consists of four tabs, Page, Margins, Header Footer, and Sheet. You can click any one of these tabs to set the corresponding attributes of the worksheet prior to printing. On the Page tab, you can change the orientation of the page from Portrait to Landscape by selecting the desired option button within the Orientation section. This is useful for printing worksheets that are very wide. In the Scaling section, you can set the amount of scaling of the text in the worksheet. You can increase the scaling percentage to make the printout more easily readable, or you can scale it down to fit more printed data on a page. You can select the Adjust To Option button and then enter a percentage into the text box to the right of that option, which sets at what percentage of the default size the information should print. When you're adjusting the page breaks within the Page Break Preview, what you are really doing is adjusting this value, which can then set more data on a printable page. You can also select the Fit To Option button and then enter the number of pages across and down into the two spinner boxes that follow that option to the right in the scaling section. Now below the scaling section you can then use the paper size drop-down to select the size of paper to which you will be printing the worksheet. You can use the print quality drop-down to set a print quality in dots per inch. You can type a number into the first page number text box to set the first page to display that number as the starting point in the header or footer, assuming that you have added page numbering to the header and footer when printing. On the Margins tab, you can set the print margins for your worksheet. Use the spinner arrows at the right of each margins text box to set the top, right, bottom, and left margins within inches. You can also set how far in from the top or bottom edge the header and footer data will print by setting that value into the header and footer spinner boxes. You can also check the check boxes under the center on page section to center the worksheet data horizontally or vertically. On the Header and Footer tab, you will see the header and footer for your current workbook. You can use the Header and Footer drop-down boxes that appear on this tab to select some pre-made standard heading information, or you can click either the Custom Header or Custom Footer buttons to create a custom header or footer into which you can type your own data. If you choose to create a custom header or custom footer, then in the header or footer dialog boxes you will enter information into either the left section, center section, or right section text boxes. Excel also provides you with multiple buttons that allow you to insert pre-created fields of information into your headers and footers. These buttons are Format Text, Insert Page Number, Insert Number of Pages, Insert Date, Insert Time, Insert File Path, Insert File Name, Insert Sheet Name, Insert Picture, and Format Picture. You can click any of these buttons to insert that type of information into the currently selected area within your custom header or footer. Note that you can also select text that you have typed into your custom header or footer, and then click the Format Text button to modify the font and font size.
You can also place images into the header and footer area. You can click the Insert Picture button and then use the Insert Picture window that appears to select the image that you want to insert. Once you've inserted a picture, you can select it and then click the Format Picture button to edit the properties of the selected image. When you're finished, click the OK button to then set the properties for the image. Once you've then set the appearance of your custom header or custom footer in either the header or footer dialog boxes, then just click the OK button to return to the page setup dialog box. Notice there are four checkboxes at the bottom of the header and footer tab. Different odd and even pages, different first page, scale with document, and align with page margins. If you want to print different header or footer information for odd and even pages, or for the first page, or for both, then check either or both checkboxes as needed. You will then need to click either the custom header or the custom footer buttons to open the header or footer dialog boxes. Note you will then have two or three tabs depending upon your checkbox selections for each unique header or footer that you will need to create within your workbook. These work the same way as they did when you created only a single custom header or footer. You'll simply need to click on the tab of the custom header or footer that you want to set before you add the desired header or footer content. Once again, when you're finished, just click the OK button to return to the header footer tab within the page setup dialog box. Note that the last two checkboxes on this tab simply allow you to scale the headers and footer along with the worksheet content if needed and align the headers and footers with the page margins specified in the margins tab. The sheet tab allows you to set additional worksheet options for printing. In the Print Area text box, you can enter or select a cell range to print. You can click the Collapse dialog button at the right end of this text box to collapse the dialog box down. You can then click and drag over the cells that you want to print to set them as the print area. You must, however, click the Expand Dialog button at the right end of the text box to expand the dialog box again. Be careful when assigning print areas. Once set, it will always and forever print only that selected range of cells when you click the Print button until you change or remove the print area setting. So be sure that you delete the entry that you make into this text box before saving your worksheet. In the Print Titles section, you can set selected columns or rows to repeat at the left and top of each printed page. To do this, once again click the Collapse dialog button that appears at the right end of the Rows to Repeat at Top text box, and then click anywhere into the row that you want to repeat at the top of each printed page. When finished, then click the Expand dialog button to expand the dialog box again. You can then do the same thing with the Columns to Repeat at Left text box to set selected columns to repeat at the left of each printed page. In the Print section of the Sheet tab, you can check the checkboxes to print the grid lines, print black and white, print draft quality, or print row and column headings. You can also change the display of errors in cells that contain errors by using the Cell Errors As drop-down to select blank. That will cause cell errors to display as blanks. 
For example, this is useful if you are displaying an average in a formula that does not have enough information to average yet. Normally, you would see the divide by zero error message telling you that you cannot divide by zero. You can change that display with this drop-down when printing. Also, if you have comments that have been inserted into your worksheet, you can use the Comments drop-down to select how comments should be printed in your worksheet, if printed at all. Finally, in the Page Order section, you can set the print order of the worksheet pages to either over, then down, or down, then over for very large worksheets that have page breaks both horizontally and vertically. When you have finished setting your page setup options, click the OK button at the bottom of the page setup dialog box to apply your page setup options. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.